Welcome back everybody. It's good to have you to another real estate market update for the greater Milwaukee area this time in November 2023. So if you were under the impression that the Milwaukee market has been a lot hotter than what you have heard in the news about the national housing market, you would be correct. We started the year early on in spring. I was mentioning it in the top number five most competitive markets in the US. And now that we almost have 12 months of data under the belt and the season is slowly coming to an end we are still ranked at top number six of all uh, top 100 metro area markets in the us so why that is and how we get there and what we can expect next that's the topic for today but before we get started let's take a look at the latest numbers straight out of the mls system so here the october numbers inventory is up you know we take it 3,451 units were on the market altogether. That's up 7.2% from last year. That's a much welcome increase in inventory. If you recall earlier this summer, we were around 2,000. And if you're looking for a home and you're searching on the MLS, it feels very different if you're looking at 2,000 units or if you're looking at 3,400, almost 3,500 units. So that's a lot more inventory, but compared to where we should be, you can see that below, October 15, we were at around 12,000 units. That was a balanced neutral market. So in comparison, still relatively short on inventory. What's changing though is we are closing more and more transactions every month. So this is a function of inventory. As inventory is expanding a little bit, I mentioned this many times before, the compression of the market, the fact that we had very a very small amount of listings close every month you know at some point we were down 25 28 percent behind last year that was not due to a lack of buyer demand despite the high interest rates buyer demand was very very strong it was simply a lack of inventory and now that the inventory situation is slowly relaxing a little bit you can see that this number is coming down only 10.9 percent that is much, much better than the 25, 28% we had previously. So as inventory is expanding, we're seeing more transactions. So that kind of shows the correlation there. Days on market, eight days. This summer we were at five. Every month we seem to be pick up, picking up one day. So now we were at six, seven, and now in October at eight days on market. You know, still a far cry from the 62 that we would normally expect this time of the year. And median sold price at $301,000. So that is also coming down, uh, which is very typical for the late fall season here in Milwaukee with a very strong seasonality. If you follow my channel, you have heard me say this a million times. But compared to October last year, which is, you know, apples to apples comparison, we're still up 7.5%. So if we continue this direction, we will probably finish the year with an average appreciation in Milwaukee of 7%, right around there, 65 to 7 so this is a lot stronger than the bulk of the US market, which is coincidentally what I want to talk about today. November, as I mentioned earlier, is historically always kind of the clearance sale month. Uh, this is very typical, especially at the time around Thanksgiving. A lot of buyers are distracted with holidays, etc. But there's still inventory on the market. And a lot of sellers haven't gotten the memo. They they still go out there with, you know, quote unquote summer prices. And then you see price drops as they're seeing they're not getting enough showings and any offers. So at, at this moment, you know, in the last few weeks, I think I've seen the most amount of price drops in the last two weeks than I've, I've seen in the entire year. And what has also helped is interest rates are dropping. So we have seen a few changes in the economy, both macro, you know, global, but also locally here. We'll talk about it later this video. So the lowest rate I've actually seen today was just below seven. So we came from a little over eight. That feels very, very different. And we'll talk about rates again at the end of this video. All right, before we go there, um, here's a quick question for you. Are you having any moving plans for 2024? It is not too early to reach out to me. The, the, the earlier I get involved in the process, the more can, I can help you with figuring out the strategy. If I get involved very late, which is oftentimes the case, then I'm down to providing tactical support. I can't really help you forge your, your strategy. So if you want to reach out to me, a lot of people are sending me an email after they've seen one of my videos. You have my email address here. Or a really good way is you just go on my website, onpointrg.com. You find my calendar there. You can see where I have open appointments and you pick one that works best for you and we can hop on a quick Zoom call or phone call. And with that, let's get back on the data. So talking about inventory, this is basically total inventory over this year, over this season, the last 12 months here. 
And you can see we were down at tw uh, 2000 units for most of the hot period of the summer market. So uh, that was a new record low inventory and we're now at almost 3500 in October. We'll probably have a little bit more in November. So that feels good. But what is happening when you look at new inventory? So that is stuff that is coming in. That's the green line here. That is already starting to fall. That is dropping because fewer and fewer listings are coming on the market. More and more people say, well, I want to sell my house, but I'm going to wait until spring. And that is why the, the green line starts dropping. I think we'll, we'll see it drop off in November, you know, very much like you see it on the left side of the chart. That would be very typical. And um, that is what I'm expecting for November as well. So, you know, that's kind of the outlook. Overall inventory will increase a little bit more, but the quality of that inventory will not be as great. So there's going to be listings in there that have been, you know, looked at and people decided not to make an offer either because the price was too high or the condition not good or probably a combination of both. But that also creates an opportunity. You know, sellers are now receptive to offers. There's a little bit of room to negotiate, which is, kind of a new thing that we haven't had seen all year. Um, this is what we're expecting for inventory. Let's take a look at sold to list ratio. If you haven't heard me talk about it, super important metric. Let me get caught up, you, get, get you caught up, excuse me. Um, so what this measures, it tells you how much above or below list price on average buyers are paying for a listing. So if it's at 100%, that means on average people paying exactly list price. If you're over 100%, that means there's bidding wars going on, people are bidding up. If it's below 100%, you know, historically, we always have been around 94, 95, maybe 96%. So then on average, you can negotiate a little bit of a discount for the majority of the history of the real estate market in Wisconsin. We've been in this place only the last three years we have seen these over 100% sold to list ratios. And you can see here the green period is kind of peak market in the summer, spring, summer, and we are nicely coming down as projected, not a surprise here, still a little over 100, 100.3 to be exact. And I think this ratio is going to continue to come down. It will hit the lowest point in December. Remember there is one month lag and when deals are negotiated and uh, get signatures and then when they're closing. So it, in this chart, it shows up one month later when deals are actually closing. So this is kind of the window of opportunity that exists right now that there is a little wiggle room to negotiate. You can sneak an inspection in, you can get your financing contingency, appraisal contingency in. All of that stuff was really on the chopping board, uh, board uh, earlier this uh, spring, summer. So very different. And we also see it in the median sold price. That number is skewed a little bit because you have uh, more nicer listings coming on the market in spring, summer. So don't take this like 100% um, on the dollar value. So it's not like every house is $30,000 less, but the trend is still there. You are paying less for a house now than you would have paid in summer. And that is probably going to uh, follow the same direction. And then you can see it on the left side of this chart at some point in, in December, January, it turns around and starts going up, getting ready for spring market. Now, this is the situation in Milwaukee and it's, it's very easy to get caught up on, oh my God, real estate has gotten so expensive in Milwaukee. That's why I'm always a big fan of putting data in context. And let me show you where we are compared to the national average. So the red line here, that is national average. And there's a few interesting things. So the first thing that you can see here is that we have seen quite a bit of exuberance. So a steady trend here, and then here's the exuberance. And then now the market is kind of finding a new direction. You can see that this peak is higher than this peak. So it, we're kind of going sideways, maybe a little bit downwards on a national level. On the Milwaukee side, you can see we have not participated in this exuberance here. So we kept very steady following our trend line here. These are the summer peaks and the winter lows and pricing. And you can see we have significantly increased. So from this high to this high, this is this year summer, we're obviously went up quite a bit. So the interesting thing is that Milwaukee is relatively low in pricing compared to the national average but it is higher in competition than the national average. And this is sometimes surprising to relocation clients here that come from very expensive markets. They come to Milwaukee and they're really shocked by how hard you have to compete here as a buyer. So let's take a look on how Milwaukee is stacking up to some of the other 100, uh, top 100 metro areas. You can see here in green, uh, this is Milwaukee, very strong seasonal pattern. You can see the ups and downs every year. And then on top of it, you can see other markets where if you're Boston, Seattle, 
Austin, Denver. Um, you can pause the video here if you want to take a closer look. So these are all priced higher and you can see the exuberance that we've seen in those markets that we haven't seen in Milwaukee. If you want to see markets that are priced lower than Milwaukee, and I, I keep looking for those because in my opinion, Milwaukee is not a below average city. It's pretty cool to live here. And you have to go to places like Akron, Ohio. Sorry guys, no offense there. And uh, Wichita, Kansas, before you find markets that are lower priced than the Milwaukee metro area. And they're also much smaller cities. So I think Akron is about 200,000 people. Wichita, I think, is about 400,000. Milwaukee metro area is about 1.6 million. In general, the bigger a metro area is, uh, the higher prices are as well. And if you say now, okay, Marcus, you've picked out all the expensive markets. Let me show you what this looks like when I pull a really expensive market in here, like San Jose. It just flattens everything to the bottom of the chart. So I think it's important to keep you know a little bit in mind where we are in relation to the rest of the country. Now, let's go back to a sold to list ratio. Remember, everything above 100 means bidding war. Everything below 100 means there's some wiggle room to negotiate. And when you look at this in red again, we have the national average. You can see the time of exuberance, you know, when free COVID money was flooding the system. You can see on a national average, we went suddenly above 100. So we had two seasons here where the buying got crazy all over the US. Now this is drying up. Interest rates are significantly higher than they used to be. And um, so we, we tried to come up here again, but on a national level, we are nowhere near as competitive as we used to be. Now, when you want to see a really competitive market, I filtered them. The number one top most competitive market right now is actually Hartford, Connecticut. And they've never left this dynamic of bidding wars. In fact, it's even worse now than it used to be one or two years ago. So this is a very, very hot market. Austin, Texas is another interesting example because they went crazy high. Their prices went up 20, 30% every year, sometimes 10% in one single quarter. And you can see here that they had an absolute insane average 10% almost over list price. So that means in some incidences, people were making offers 50% over list price. So we've seen, you know, of course, tech boom in Austin, Texas uh, that fueled all this. Now they're, they're sobering up down there quite a bit. And you can see sold to list ratio is down, prices are down. So there's a lot of negotiation. This really makes the point that there is no national real estate market. You have to look at individual markets because they are driven by individual dynamics. Here's Milwaukee. And you can see that we are pretty much in the same competitive field uh, in bidding war territory, if you will, as we have been the, during the COVID years. So not much has changed. Despite prices are going up and interest rates are going up, we are still in the territory. And if nothing majorly changes from what we see right now, you know, buyer demand is very, very uh, robust. And, you know, despite interest rate changes, hasn't changed much. We, we don't have an influx of inventory. So unless something really majorly changes, type of a black swan event, like a pandemic or something, we don't anticipate really a change for the spring market. So that's kind of where we are. We're looking at probably repeating this pattern. So we're going down now. November, December here, and then probably we'll be shooting right back up for the spring market. Mortgage rates obviously have a huge impact on this. So this is something that I want to spend a few minutes talking about. And let me show you how big that impact is. Um, you have here the last two and a half years. This is the cost of home ownership on a national level. So these are national averages. And you can see how much more expensive it has gotten um, to where we are today. So this starts out in January 2021, where the national average home price was just over $300,000. And the interest rate was crazy low, 3.17%. And historically speaking, uh, mortgage rates have never been much below 5 or 6%. In fact, for much of the 70s and 80s, we have seen double digit mortgage rates, you know, 12, 15, 17%. So this was really a very crazy time with, with hyper low mortgage rates. If you are, you know, if you're not the baby boomer, you may not recall these times, but you know, that was really uh, an anomaly and housing was insanely cheap. This is really what has fueled that rally on a national level. Um, so this is really what has changed. You know, an, a typical housing payment went from $1,000, which was kind of stupid if you didn't buy a house at the time, 
and you know of course now you're looking at 2200. Um, there's always two ways you can look at the data. You can say, oh my God, housing cost has doubled. That creates an issue for affordability. But on the other hand, you can say, you know, Milwaukee is still in this territory. You've just seen the data. Median price here in Milwaukee is just at $301,000 as, as of October. Rates are higher, but we also see them dropping now. In the last week, two weeks, we have seen them. I've seen them drop almost every day. Uh, in the low sevens, yesterday I've actually seen uh, the first rate in the 6.8 territory. So we're we're getting back there, and that of course is interesting. Now, what are the professionals telling us? Um, as always, I have here the forecasts from Fannie Mae, the Mortgage Banker Association, and the National Association of Realtors. And I show this chart almost every month because it's interesting to me what they're forecasting. And I think in the beginning of this um, inflation period in the US, these three have been too optimistic. So they were forecasting originally, if you remember, and you can go back to my videos from, from a year ago, they were thinking that latest by spring 2024, we will be back at around 5% mortgage rates. Now the Fed has started to say, nope, inflation is not going away so quickly, so we'll be higher for longer. And now they have all adjusted over the last three, four months, their forecasts. And the lowest is really the Mortgage Banker Association with 6.3 at the third quarter. So, you know, uh, back to school season, basically, of 2024. What I'm thinking is they were too optimistic early on that rates would come down quicker and, and harder and faster. And I think they might not, they might be wrong here again and they might err now on the side of being overly pessimistic. So there is a part of me that thinks, well, let's keep an eye on this. Um, this might happen actually faster than we think. And we had new data this week. Consumer price index came out, which, as you know, is the measure of inflation. And the last three months, I was a little bit worried that we're not done with inflation, that this was basically a false uh, a false decline, and then it would spike up a second time like it, like it did in the 70s and 80s. But the number that we got uh, this week on Wednesday was actually very promising. We are at 3.2%. The Fed responded uh, very carefully to this. You know, I think they don't want to take a victory lap quite yet because they want to keep the expectations, um, you know, moderate. But what's happening is that we're probably done hiking rates. So the question or the discussion becomes now, when is the, you know, how long is the Fed going to hold rates? Usually we're looking at a 10 month lag when the Fed starts raising rates until it shows an impact in the economy. It just takes that long to trickle down uh, from restricting money to the banks then they're restricting money to the companies then they're restricting money to the consumers. So it takes about 10 months, historically speaking, to work through the system, which would put us at um, April, April, May actually of next year where we could see a recessionary data coming up. And it's going that direction. We, we have seen some cracks in the, uh, in the job market this week and consumer confidence is down, consumer spending is down. It seems like a lot of consumers have actually burned through their cash. So now they're more on credit cards again. And you see that is really uh, putting pressure on the market. And quite frankly, the market was so overheated. We need a little bit of a recession. We need a cooling down period in order to stabilize the dollar again. So this is good. If you're curious about where the consumer price index is coming from, uh, here's a breakdown on how this, uh, they use it basically as a basket of expenses. A lot of things factor into that. Housing is the biggest one. And what they, they use something that's called rent equivalents. And with national housing prices not going up as much anymore, Milwaukee is an outlier here, but on the national level, you know, we see very, very minimal appreciation this year. Uh, we also see the pressure on the rents coming down. So rent increases are not as crazy as they used to be. So that's helping a lot. Transportation is good because fuel prices are lower, gas prices are lower. Also piped gas, the stuff that you heat your house with. And used car prices have, have come down a lot. I think 7.1%. You remember how car prices went like crazy through the roof during COVID? Um, and new prices are only up about 1.9%. So that is a very, very modest increase year over year uh, for new vehicles. Food is also coming, coming down, I think around 3%. Just eating out is still a little bit more expensive. But in all of these categories, we are seeing signs that things are settling down. And that's really a good, that's really good news for the economy. 
Now, the last thing I want to talk about is what happened to consumer net worth or household net worth. And I haven't had this data up here in a while. And I think it's so important to understand. And, you know, quite frankly, for, for us as a society, I'm also a little bit worried about this because the wealth gap is really opening up more and more. What I mean about this, um, take a look at the green line here, which is the uh, household net worth of an average US renter from 2010 to 2022 that has actually doubled. It looks like a flat line, but it has doubled from 5,400 to 10,400. And the same thing has actually also happened to homeowners. Their net worth went from $187,000 to 396 so it has also doubled but when you look at the gap that is really opening up and it's never good in a society when when you have wealth gaps opening up because that is causing unrest obviously because somebody's not going to be happy about this so you know also this is maybe a little bit of a wake-up call if you're thinking about oh maybe it's time we should we should buy a house um, it's not only about comparing what you're paying in rent every month compared to your mortgage payment and if you potentially can time the market so you really buy it the lowest price possible uh, real estate is really about you know don't try to time the market you know get into the market and stay into the market if you buy real estate and you buy a house and you own it for 10 years nobody knows what's going to happen short term there could be a crisis there could be a, a recession or something um, or a pandemic you know nobody can predict these things but when you look at long periods like 10 years um, this is very very different so just some food for, for thought here data is from the fed all right what can we expect for the near future thanksgiving is always traditional in milwaukee inventory clearance sale so we see price drops right now we see listings that are really nice coming on the market not getting an offer for a week this feels very very strange for me uh, i was out the last few days with buyers and um, you know, the, interestingly, the question that I get is, what do you think is wrong with the house that it hasn't sold in five days? Um, you would have told that somebody five years ago that, you know, when houses were on the market on average half a year, very different story today. Um, more days on market, which also means less competition, which means that we can actually write contingencies like a home inspection into an offer. So that helps greatly. Prices slightly down which is seasonally normal we see this every year so this is not the market changing in milwaukee this is just the seasonal you know end of summer getting into the winter season uh there there is always that clearance sale that we see around thanksgiving and it rapidly ends and really dramatically changes at the end of december so the market in january and february will look radically different than what we see today uh, right now, the buyers have a little bit of the upper hand for a short period of time. Inventory will disappear on the by the end of December. January 1st is going to be much less inventory out there. It's a pattern we see every year. And uh, then it's going to be slim pickings, but a lot more buyers come into the market. It's the same effect that you see with the gyms. You know, gym memberships always spike in January and February because everybody... Um, you know, has their ideas for the new year. So inventory for the next weeks, I think we still will see a little bit more in total, but less in quality. There's more stuff out there that's already picked over. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. You have my contact information down there. And I think that's all I got for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.